What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Salt and Light podcast with East Point Christian Church. My name is Adam. I'm here with Keenan again, finally, Thank and you, Kurt and Graham, and wow. we are recording at sound like a different right? time than normal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm not going to tell you what time to keep the mystery. Yeah. Hey, by the way, I want to shout out to Bob and Sally, new big fans of the podcast, and especially Come big on. fans of our producer. Yes. Well, yeah. They're a little biased. Well, who wouldn't be? Bob and Sally also have been married for over 30 years, which is pretty awesome. And so that's something that to is, celebrate. That's, a, that's that's almost a non sequitur, but that's good. What's like a non sequitur again? Something that really has nothing to do with what we were talking it's about. Not a sequitur. Yeah. Well, well, I heard you say Bob and Sally, so I just wanted to. Oh, um, so you're saying them. like they're together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They weren't. It's. Yeah. I just think that's impressive that, that they've is. been married that long. Kurt, yeah. what would you say is the secret Especially to with a, a long, like me. happy marriage? Oh, we've already heard this before. What? What did I say? Uh, you talked about teeth flossing. Oh, flossing, yeah, flossing your teeth together. Yeah, that's. A, I thought that was. Oh, a jo- I right, thought that was right, a joke, right. though. <laughs> it, no, it was. <laughs> No, I just did it last night with her. Bust. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Your teeth. Well, if you say there so. you go. Yeah. Next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going on 30. We're at 38. We're 38 and a half. 38 and a half. Oh wow. My goodness. Wow. Yeah. Praise the Lord. It's unbelievable. I look yeah. young, don't I? You do, yeah. you do. Yeah. especially when you wear so your uh, pants like that with the rolled up cuffs. You know why? <laughs> and your little pants. climbing shoes. Because my you look uh, like you're in college. My barefoot shoes. Otherwise, my well between the barefoot shoes, which removes the heel, which then makes the cuff of my pants drag on the ground, and my advancing age, which causes me to shrink. <laughs> uh, mm. My legs get shorter. Man. I don't think you're shrinking. I think you're compressing. Fun fact. <laughs> yeah. I think gravity is just what finally equation? getting its toll on you. What's the equation? Uh, at what rate are you shrinking at? It's actually an acceleration. Probably, probably a little faster than the glaciers. F equals ma. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it would actually be force equals mass times acceleration. So the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. Take his mass, and that's Negative the force 9. being applied down on him, onto his knees, his vertebrae, all that, compressing him, making him shorter. So yeah. it's going to be dependent on your mass. Running and things like that. Negative 9.8. Hey, you know what I want to do? Depends. Hey, can we do this? <laughs> no, it, gravity's not going up. No, but it's an acceleration, so it doesn't matter directionally. It just matters the velocity over time. I guess. That changed. I mean, it's a negative direction. It's, it's like G-force. It's back, right? So if mm-hmm. I was in a, a jet fighter taking a right turn, I'd have the same thing going on. Yeah, and if you want it in the yeah. customary measures, it's 32.2 feet per second squared. Nice. This stuff right. just comes bubbling you, back could up. Could you do sometimes. it in metric? Yeah, 9.81 meters per second okay. squared. I think we're losing viewers as we speak. No. Hey, so, hey, so, <laughs> so like, like every podcast right Can't now, lose what you we, don't like, have. we like to keep up with pop culture. We sure do. Yeah, so let's, do. let's go around the, yes. around the horn here and let's talk about, because who doesn't watch the Oscars, right? The, oh, yeah. uh, the Chris Farley. Chris, Chris or Chris Rock. Oh, okay. yeah. Chris Rock, Chris Rock. That's got right. smacked by Will Smith. Actually, hold on. Before you go on that, yeah. our fearless leader, Scott, came into the room and said, did you see what happened to Kid Rock? Kid Rock. Yeah. <laughs> Scott, yeah, he's, he's not up on pop culture. <laughs> yikes. No. no. <laughs> he better be what, <laughs> listening oh, to this I podcast. Thought they the look same, a lot alike, right? I thought they were the right. same we'll, person. Uh, we'll begin tutoring him. Uh, we'll do that. So, what, Keenan, what are your thoughts on that? Where do, you, where do you stand on it? We'll do like a quick overview. On Chris Rock's joke well, or the, Will Smith's well, response right. to his joke? You can include everything you want in your wow. thing, but it's got to... I think it's obviously more complex than what was seen on video. Um, but I would say that the, I think you make a, you made a good point earlier, Kurt. I won't steal your thunder, but Chris Rock was probably paid and asked to do what he was doing. Even in that moment, Will Smith maybe had a little bit of a, a little underlying hurt and insecurity from recent events that caused him to boil over emotionally and walk onto the stage and smack Chris Rock, oh, yeah. mm. um, which probably, according to his apology, it, in hindsight, was not the best deal. So I'm I'm more of a, hey, you know, we all make mistakes kind of guy and kind of a tit for tat moment. But also uh, smacking and accosting somebody is not necessarily uh, legal these days. So, so we'll, can, we'll try to keep from doing that within this group. Then. Yes. Right. It's and I'm kind of, but, like, but to be honest, I'm kind of neutral, and maybe people would be mad at me about that. But between the two dudes, 
I, I'm just not going to like, I won't, I wouldn't be the guy to slam the gavel on guilty right. or unguilty right. for that kind of so stuff. Keenan is Switzerland in this particular case. Yeah, I, I would think say it's the type good. of behavior yeah. you might expect at the barbecue after people have downed a few drinks, okay. you know, and someone has made fun of someone else's wife. But in the context of it, I think Will Smith is definitely in the wrong because mm. like I brought up before, when you're at the Oscars and there's a comedian who's hosting, no one's off limits and they can yeah. basically say anything and well, you just got to sit there and take it. Says you know? Graham, according to Will Smith, someone was off limits in his mind at least. Yeah, well, <laughs> he was wrong. <laughs> wrong. It's good. It's good, Adam. Where you come from? Um, well, Falmouth. Yeah, I come from Falmouth. I come from uh, the household of Bob and Sally. Bob and Sally. Um, Wait. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> what? Right, right. <laughs> well, I was like, so, you know, go ahead. Okay. Well, they were big <laughs> fans, so, well, there's a connection, I guess. Yeah. yeah that's kind of cool. Yeah. Wait, oh, those are the same Bob yeah, and yeah, Sally you were talking about? Yeah, it was. Okay. Sorry, that just oh. came out of the... Yeah. It's all oh. coming together. Yeah, a little weird. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I only saw it. I don't... I didn't watch it, like, live. I just saw the aftermath the next morning when uh, yeah, everything on social yeah. media was just a, a big <laughs> slap. And I saw a lot of memes about uh, uh, why did he use his hand open because paper beats rock. I thought that was really That's stupid. That's pretty funny. Uh, it was... No, it's not. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it wasn't even that bad of a joke to begin with. Yeah, and also he's a comedian, so you like expect them to make jokes about people that are sitting in the front row. But it's also dumb because they showed, they showed, they cut to Will right after he made the joke and he's like laughing. Mm, and then right. he looks over at his wife who's not laughing and then he gets up. So there's like kind of a element of, well, he thought it was funny, but then he, his wife like, like, Go defend my honor and slap him. Right, and there's an element, too, where you know you're on camera where even if you don't think it's funny, you laugh along to show mm. that you're a good sport because you know you're on camera and you don't want to be made into a meme on Facebook if you take a joke poorly and they go, oh, look at how poorly Will Smith took that joke. And then I, I'm sure he looked over at his wife and she saw he saw the eye roll yeah. that she did and was like, okay, now I have to fight for right. her honor. Which in the 1800s, I mean, you could have a duel over mm. such a thing. Which you'd meet later on to do that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't pull out the pistol right there. So he was more... I, I don't know. Drop a brother. He was more afraid of Jada than... Yeah, I think than so. I also I saw a lot so. of clips of Jada in an interview before this event saying, I don't I don't care at all what people think about my bald head. Yeah. Well, mm. apparently, yeah. that's <laughs> not the case. Yeah. yeah. So I, I still... Uh, my philosophical thing that frightens me, maybe this could lead into some more discussion is is how in the culture today we have we have thought now we think of words as being violent which is in this woke culture that we have to be so careful about the things we say that it's thought of for instance in will smith's mind that his hit was validated because mm -hmm. of what one man said and uh that seems to be askew and we continue to go down that road and that's Frightening and dangerous. It results in thin skin, too. It does. It does. A lot of volatility. I'm pretty sensitive, and yeah. I'm th thinking that that's very sensitive. I'm glad. I would hope that in your insensitivity, you'd be able to tell Will Smith to his face, seems like I'm less sensitive than you are, Will. Uh, well, you know, I don't know what I would say to Will Smith if I met him in person. <laughs> I'd probably be like, hi, <laughs> nice to meet you. I'd probably be would you say anything about his, Will Smith his wife, life. Jada? No. <laughs> I didn't even know who Jada was until this happened. You'd say, hey, Fresh Prince. Yeah. Yeah. And hope you didn't get smacked. And and I didn't know until this that, that Chris Rock was the voice of Marty in Madagascar. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Huh. That's uh, Yeah, that's neat. I recognize. I was like, hey, that's the voice of Marty, the zebra. You did grow up in Falmouth at Bob and Sally's house. I know. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> coming back to that, though, I think while... It is the case that it's easy for me to judge what Will did in that in that moment, and I'd like to think I would do something different. I don't think he walked into the Oscars thinking, I'm going to get triggered, and I'm going to walk onto the stage, and I'm going to smack Chris Rock in the face, you know? Um, and so I think it took him off guard in the moment, and I think when he looked at his wife, it brought up some kind of trauma that's in between both of them, and maybe he's more afraid of 
her reaction, what she's going to do later if he doesn't do something in that moment, which doesn't make it right by any means. But I've definitely had moments in my life where my blood has boiled over and I've done dumb things in the moment. I'd like to think if it was on national TV, though, I would have a little bit more of my metacognition there to think about, is this actually the right thing to do? Well, if so to your point, the, wo- the wokeism in the culture is a huge factor in this. But also, I was we were chatting about it briefly um, in a men's group I was with today, and, and one of the guys just brought such a fresh perspective and said, I just don't get why people care so much about these people. Right. Not about them in their heart and their soul, but just... What happens and with the hypersonic communication that can happen now these days, you can be somewhere in the room, in the moment, right. visually and audi- audibly. And then it ultimately, because they're in this place of, of employment that, that puts them in the spotlight, that we put this odd imbalance of, of uh, they need to be above reproach. Sure. When and we all know, and, and a lot of these people, not, I'm not just going to, not necessarily Will Smith or Chris Rock, but we hear of the depravity that comes out of these situations. And why would we expect certain situations to play out when in reality we're treating them like they should be um, these high character people where at the end of the day, they're just people. Mm -hmm. And we put everybody under a microscope and go, how dare they? Well, when was the last time we overreacted and did anything that was just, we just on a camera to your point, focusing on our every every action. Mm -hmm. I've never smacked somebody because they said anything about Ashley, but well, that's the, not yet. yet. Not yet. <laughs> so, so when we talk about a culture change, and then and and Graham just brings up a, like a, almost a word that's new to our vocabulary, the word triggered, mm. and by even having a word that says it, it ends up provoking results in right. some way. Right. We're giving permission to it in a way. So, what? Yeah. Well, what's, you what's triggered most, me. What's the most triggered uh, that that you can think that? You've you've then had a response to it. Oh, I could go ahead. You guys, I just came to my mind. If you have something that comes to your mind, go ahead. Because Adam, have you ever been triggered? Yeah, I mean, hasn't every everybody's been triggered to some extent? What is, what does it look like in your life work. before? Um, no. Well, something obviously came to mind immediately for you. I might need some more time to to think about it. So why don't you go? Because mine's, mine's, yeah, I, so this is pre, pre-following Jesus day, so I'll, I'll, This is like a mic drop trigger. Yeah, well. So that makes it okay. It's no, it doesn't make it okay. It just, I think, I think it leads back to abiding. Of course. I think when, uh, so I'll, Classic. I'll begin with the end in mind. I think when we're abiding in Jesus, truly connected to the vine, triggering in our own humanity no longer exists. Mm-hmm. So I'll say that. So pre-abiding in Jesus, um. I was engaged to my now wife. Uh, we weren't married, but we we also were all all existing on the weekends in this same residence with not only my parents but my brother and and his girlfriend at the time. And there was this animosity that was developing between the the girlfriend and fiance, my fiance, right? So there was this this very felt um, but tried to be ignored um, tension that it existed, and and it finally boiled over where. I'll, I'll set the scene. I'm, I'm across the road from the home working on a truck and I get a text from my fiance explaining what is being said in the next room about her by this girlfriend of my brother's now ex-girlfriend. And I will say that was the moment that I was triggered. Mm. And I went from just carelessly tinkering on a vehicle to throwing everything that was in my hands to the ground and running across the road and crashing through the house and my mother, my father, and my brother trying to stop me. Um, not knowing what I was going to do, but I was going to give her a piece of my mind verbally. Mm-hmm. May that be known. But I had kind of come to the end of myself and the end of my patience. And I would say that was the last time I would feel like I was triggered to the point of boiling over. Yep. And it was like that precipice that you can only take so much and then you snap. And I yeah. think, that's a very real thing in our humanity. I think we abuse the word triggered and justify actions because we all can get to the point where we're done and we make a decision that we're at a crossroads. Mm-hmm. But I think so many people prematurely think that they've come to a crossroads so they can justify their behavior. Mm-hmm. So that was, that was a, a triggering moment that took a year and a half or more of buildup before the boil over. But I think that was a... 
Yep. That and tends I've, to that's be legitimate. how it happens, probably. It's not like an instant, mm. this happened to trigger me randomly in this moment. It's like something that's built up. But would you would you say culturally that's the norm, or are people abusing trigger to justify their actions? Oh, absolutely. I, th- I think the word trigger kind of means something different than it, it probably should, or that it has meant in the past. Mm. But yeah, I feel like it's definitely used to justify. Or it's like, it's one of those things that you can say it and then people can't really tell you that you're wrong. Right. So then you can kind of do whatever you right. want. Well, on college campuses, they're using it by canceling a prospective speaker right. because the people will be triggered. So they're actually anticipating that they're going to lose control. And connotating that somebody would come in perfectly normal and fine and in an instant or in that speaking engagement, they're, they're triggered immediately, right? That one thing would would bring them from being fine to uh, unhealthy in that moment. Or even the right. poster advertising that individual triggers somebody. Yes. Yes, it's a, it's a big piece of fragility. I know for me, my, if we use that word again, trigger my most, I don't have a specific response because I'd have a million of these, uh, would be sort of a, an acerbic response, some a cutting sarcasm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um which, which I used to try to justify sarcasm as like a spiritual gift, but I was unable to. <laughs> um, and, and so hopefully Jesus is mellowing that uh, a bit. I'd say so. And Yeah, well, thank you. And uh, so that's, that's kind of what mine would look like. But I'm, I'm curious, and as, as Adam, I'm not Adam, after, Adam, after Graham talks about his, mm-hmm. where do we find... Where Jesus gives a how we should respond to those things. Mm. I, I'm curious. So, kind of uh, an anachronism, anachronistic uh, phrase for Jesus that in today's culture, if we brought it back, how would he say we should respond to being triggered? So, you want me to share about? I do. I want you to share. Time I've been triggered. Yeah. Excuse me. I have a frog in my this throat. morning. Um, so <laughs> I remember when I was. You literally had a frog um, in your throat? That frog triggered It me. was, yeah, it just hopped out, actually. Oh, good. Um, I, so I remember I was uh, dating Magdalene at the time, and I was seeing her family for the first time. She has six brothers and a sister. And so I wasn't really sure what to expect. I hadn't really met them. And so we Did drive up. Did listen to the podcast, by the way? Uh, maybe. I hope okay. so. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to share this episode okay. with them. And um, and so I, I, I meet her family. And her family likes to joke around and their love language is ribbing each other. And so in my family, we have some of that, but uh, if there's a new person in the house, it's very much more where ask them a lot of questions and really kind of hospitable and, and kind to them and don't want to offend them. And so I come in and um, I just went through the gauntlet with her <laughs> brothers, to be honest with you. And I remember sitting down to a dinner with them and they're literally texting each other at the table and cracking up and laughing and like snickering and looking over at each other and i'm just sitting there like trying to ignore it trying to play along all of these different feelings i'm angry at the same time i'm like i'm understanding because they're like trying to test me and see what i'm made of and so um i think it just got to the point where i was i was frustrated enough where i was like i just need to go get a drink and so i i grabbed a Lacroix out of the fridge and just kind of walked off and and took a break and, and took a breather and I came back and they're like, Hey man, we, you know, we don't want to give you too hard of a time. We're just messing with you. We're just, I think they could tell I was a, a little bit bothered by their behavior. Um, and they would make some, some jokes that I didn't completely understand about past boyfriends and stuff. And so at that moment I could definitely tell I was starting to, my heart was starting to race a little bit more. And for me it was less of, um, it was, it was more me, I could tell, shutting down because I didn't really know their family culture. Um, Magdalene, did, and, and no offense to Magdalene, but I don't feel like she prepped me well enough to go into it because now I'm married to Magdalene and I, and I, I just go right in and I jump right in and I, we go tit for tat now and it's kind of fun. But at the moment, I was just kind of overwhelmed and I had no idea how to respond, so yeah. I got offended. So did you have to go to rehab to get off of this LaCroix grip that it had on you? Yes, yeah. Now LaCroix is actually a trigger for me. So okay, yeah. if you, if right, you have no, a LaCroix we'll, we'll around me, it, I'll yeah. just yeah. run right. in the opposite direction. Right, right. No, I love LaCroix, actually. Um, LaCroix so. or LaCroix? LaCroix. Both. Okay. It's a French um, pronunciation. Yeah. I think it's important <laughs> to note, though, that the way that we're talking about triggering and triggers and stuff is not... 
like there are meta there are like actual of course like ptsd and stuff yes. that are actual triggers sure That's not the kind of stuff where we're not trying to downplay that or anything because those things are i know are very real for people mm. well that kind of gets into the cultural discussion of what i see is a lot of people mass diagnose themselves with different things yeah. and so ptsd isn't just something that war veterans suffer with but now it's seems like everyone has their version of PTSD. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't necessarily want to downplay that completely, but at the same time to say it's the same as someone who came back from Afghanistan and dealt with roadside bombs <laughs> and 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 deal or, with it on the same level of severity, I think that's a stretch. And I have a friend that was, that was diagnosed with with post traumatic stress disorder um because uh, pre prematurely uh his kidneys were removed from his body and he lives day by day wondering if he misses his medication, if he's going to not live the next day. Right. So mm. again, to some people think it's a war driven thing or it, it could be these things that truly, um, right. you don't understand maybe your words or, or the scenarios you can put people in that they've got this inner fear because they live a different reality than we do. Yeah. But so to kind of give people yeah. like that kudos and know that we're praying and supporting them. But then you got the cultural thing that I just imagine. um, where you almost use the diagnosis to justify oh, your bad behavior. Right. right. That's right. Like, that or your biases. Me, so or everything your, I do now is okay. <laughs> yeah, and justify your biases or justify your unwillingness to see compromise or have dialogue. Right. And that's so so what do you think it means when Jesus says if your enemy hits you on the cheek, turn turn him the other one? What is what is he talking about there? How does that relate to this? Or does Kurt's it? looking at me. Yeah. Um I, I think it absolutely you, does. not talking into his microphone. That's yeah, how you know. <laughs> <laughs> Adam just triggered me now. He's always talking to me about the me. microphone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'll turn off your mic. <laughs> so I'll give, you the, I'll, get, I'll give you guys the antidote. Abiding in Jesus, I think, is the ultimate. Uh, Power play. The ultimate um, anti triggering medication. I think when we are, when we're, in a, and I don't mean, make sure you're, we, we kind of keep clarifying this, not be in your Bible, pray for 30 minutes a day, uh, go to church. It's if you're experiencing the profound presence of God regularly and walking with him and journeying through this life with him, he almost puts a trigger lock on your mind and your body. And I'll say that because I've run into very similar situations in my personal life that probably should have, that would have triggered the old me even more so than what happened six, seven years ago um, in the dooryard while I was working on that truck. And it just doesn't because I think we see the world through the lens of the kingdom. We see the world through the lens of Jesus. And I think Jesus in his, in the Sermon on the Mount is he's, he's preaching that and, and proclaiming that to his followers has eternally the, the perspective of the kingdom and almost giving them his perspective to say, look, if you have a, if you have a kingdom vision, if you're, if you're centered in my gospel, you're going to see no other option, but to turn your cheek. Not to say that, allow people to, to, because at the same time, blessed are those who seek righteousness for the, I think theirs is the kingdom in this idea of like, we don't bow down, um, to abusers, but we also don't, don't take up our own sword when, when somebody slaps us. Right. I, right. So it's more about what our response is rather than us being doormats. That, that's right. right. Well, cause we had a situation here at the point a few, I guess a couple months ago. Now there was a, there was a guy probably stood six, five, six, six, um, just towered over me in a way. And was, was really, uh, having a hard time mentally and emotionally, um, could have been, could have been a, 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 a mental illness, uh, could also been a spiritual bondage thing. But I was convinced at that moment that I was probably going to get laid out. I was probably going to get Will Smith here at the point. And uh, Chris Rock. To be yeah. to be completely fair, in my own heart, I was ready for it, and I knew that I wasn't gonna get up and give him one back. But I tell you what, five six years ago, I I wouldn't have let him hit me first. And I think that there's just this this difference. I think when we're truly abiding in Jesus, not to mm -hmm. say I don't get frustrated, but um, the fight or flight turns into a whole different thing, and, and you you just fight a different way. So that's just kind of raw from my own heart. Yeah. And I think Jesus also recognizes, um, especially in that moment, um, there's a Roman occupation that's taking place and that if you're trying to play the game of your oppressor, you're going to lose yeah. in that, in that instance. And I think Martin Luther King Jr. Understood that when they did their, their peaceful protests, that if we try to, 
uh, come back at these police who have these dogs and these hoses and we try to riot, we're going to play into their hand mm-hmm. by doing that. And I think Jesus is aware of that as well. And so I think you have to know what game your enemy is playing um, and then how to subvert it. And in the instance that Jesus is talking about on the Sermon on the Mount, there's a lot of things that are really kind of clever and crafty about even just, hey, if someone asks you to go a mile mm. with their luggage, if a Roman soldier does that for you, which is the law at that time, that they could legally tell you to walk a mile with their luggage, go to. Mm-hmm. And by doing that, you're going to show them that this doesn't affect me the way you think it does. In fact, I want to show you love in despite of what you think is oppression. Mm. And so, um, and I also think Jesus knows the only way to end the cycle of violence is to be the person that doesn't hit back. Yeah. And, uh, but I think that's different than language in a lot of ways because violence has a very clear end in the sense of you can really maim someone, cripple them or kill them. Um, but with language and discourse, I think we have to treat it differently than violence, kind of like coming full circle to what you were talking about in the beginning, because we need to embrace the conflict in our words and the tension in our words, because if we don't, then we're not going to see real resolution. And I believe if we don't do the hard work with our language, it's going to come out in the Will Smith moments sure. where we're going to lash out like two-year-olds right. at each other. And we well, are going to start rioting in the streets and different things like that because we can't embrace real debate. Right. Well, and interesting. So Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount addresses language, doesn't he? If you call, if you call your brother a fool, mm-hmm. uh, it's almost in that case, it's not that you're going to get recompense from the individual you're dealing with, but there's a judgment that's going to come mm-hmm. uh, because of the way that, that we do that. And and you're right, it's it's not what what you're talking about is is the exchange of ideas not tearing somebody else down right. personally. Right. And so we have to be above that for sure. Right. And I even think in, in our cultural conversation as well, that we have to be really clear about what we believe is the truth and realize that some of our beliefs will affect other individuals, but we don't use it as a way to lord over other people's lifestyles or behaviors or choices in a way that makes them feel bullied by us. Mm. And I think like, I mean, I don't know if we want to go there, but I think the trans issue is a big one where you, you might speak what you believe is the truth around that issue, but you're not doing it in a way that makes that person feel ostracized or hated or uh, belittled Pressed. or anything like that. You're doing it out of a place of genuine love and saying, look, you're, you're a child of God just like I am, but this is what I believe around how mm. God has created sex and gender. And, and you're giving them a way into a new life, not a into a new jail cell. Sure. Right. Yeah. Go into that more. Well, just couching, I think in our language, um, instead of going after them and saying, you're wrong, I'm the oppressor now of your freedoms, what you perceive to be freedoms. You can either convince them that they're, they're wrong and they need to be oppressed and changed that way, like penalized, or that you're giving them a door to life. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think it's mm-hmm. two totally different conversations. Right. right. And yeah, just, just the language and the culture, because those are some big, triggers Mm. but i have a question for you kurt yes do you think was jesus ever in his ministry walking here on earth was he do you ever see him as being maybe triggered wow um i don't (laughs) no Mm. as a matter of fact he he seems to always answer other questions with something that doesn't even have anything to do with what the question was he 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 deflects quite often by telling people what they should hear rather than what mm-hmm. they want as a response. And I mean, the, the ultimate him hanging on the cross saying, mm-hmm. forgive them, they don't know what they do, mm-hmm. um, is kind of a demonstration of, of who he is. How he about was walking in one time in the temple? I was going to ask. Yeah. Just... And, and that was in offense to uh, a behavior that was happening and saying, and, and honestly, done out of love as well. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, a judgment going on because they're taking that temple that's supposed to be a house of prayer, mm. turning it into a den of thieves. And so he was trying to maintain a, a holiness mm. piece that had to be done. So we need, there's, a, there's a righteous anger that we can have, but it should be done in love. Um, right. like, a, like a cord of whips? Yeah, well, so, so we don't know that he was whipping people, right? No, no, I just like I was wasn't just, saying he was, people. I just yeah, he was driving animals out and such in that particular place. I don't think he he uh, 
was he violent. Made, the, to the, the, the turned over tables didn't land yes. on anyone's toes. So no. I would right. I would say that Jesus was triggered, but the things that triggered Jesus were things that should trigger all of us. So but triggered to me means that you're going to have a response that is not thought out. Okay. I don't think Jesus think ever answered because that's, would have a response. Because that's that's, not that's that. actually that's that's what I was wanted to talk about a little bit is like I think we all get triggered, but I think our response to it is everything. Think about the reason. Think think about the noun that is in that adjective or that verb. Trigger. What is it? Trigger. Right. So I I think you you can be triggered whether you're pointing with intent or you're just flailing your firearm. Mm -hmm. But the 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 point is, is you've come to a point where the trigger's pulled, Mm -hmm. and whether you've strategically waited or been patiently calculating. When I get to that point, I know exactly what, you know, Jesus, when I'm going in that temple, I know I'm probably going to run into, but it's going to, the, the zeal for my father's house is going to consume me. Right. Right. To, the trigger was pulled. Well, I think or most of us, when we're triggered, just, it's like uh, shooting from the hip with an RPG, but Jesus yeah, is, usually when he's, I don't think I that'd be a, uh, RPG just, just for people to, that's a rocket propelled grenade. Right. Uh, right. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Just, yeah. I didn't know. What I thought most fun. of us, Some you know, might not know, after, you know, seeing what's going on in the Ukraine, we, we know what RPGs are at this point. They're actually not really using a lot of RPGs. They're not. I, I feel like they are. Javelins. Maybe I'm wrong. Javelins. Javelins. I'm kind of triggered by this conversation. Right yeah. Here. This is, yeah. this is too far. <laughs> yeah, Foreign diplomacy. Yeah, come on. I feel like you guys are going to. But it's but I think escalate. Jesus when he's when he's um, angry he's laser focused on what mm. he's upset about and um, he's not upset as much with the the people as he is with the action and the sin right. or even like in Mark you see he's in, indignant about um, people's ailments and their sickness it makes him literally angry he's angry at Lazarus at the tomb mm. right he saw right. everybody tired and, and that's what one of the phrases was. Yeah, the the nature of our fallen yeah. world ticks Jesus right. off. Devil, you tick me off. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise him from the dead. So there. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Which is interesting because I don't know the if Kurt I share the same uh, righteous in- indignation as Jesus with the fallenness of our world as much as the stupid things around me <laughs> that make me feel triggered or my own vein, you know, when my own ego is is getting poked or, mm. or things like that, or I'm not being perceived in the way I want to, or if I'm getting embarrassed by somebody that those are the things that tend to trigger me, but it, it really shows where my heart is compared to Jesus. Who's so let's have a fun exercise. And I have a thought. You can probably share your thought and then okay. I'll do the exercise. Do that. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, one, one thing that I just always remember is the story of Abraham Lincoln, that each time he was triggered, if we want to use that phrase and he was upset at somebody, he would write a scathing letter to them. Not a good joke. But he would never mail it. Stick he, it in the fireplace or something. Just, Abe Lincoln was triggered. Yeah. So yeah. Oh well, yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. Well, he would, sensitive here. He, he wouldn't wow. do that, and so I find that quite oh, often, um, even out of fun, I might want to respond uh, in a saucy way. Um, you guys paying attention? In a no. in a saucy way, when somebody does something, and I might text something, but it might be a little bit off color, so I wait. Smart. And then the spirit shows me, no, <laughs> don't say no, that. Don't. That's not even. Don't do it. that. You're, what what you're going to get especially out of in it, a permanent it, format is right. Isn't isn't <laughs> worth doing. And uh, and so if we carry that into our our day to day, it doesn't help you thing. sleep at night. It's right. No. So what's your exercise? <laughs> what's your exercise? Thirty three minutes in. My exercise, and this could this could um, just bring some practicality to the conversation. So, if we were to go around and just off the top of our head, it doesn't have to be the one thing oh, that would trigger us. But that. what, what right now? Just thinking briefly, you got thirty seconds to come up with what would what would trigger you today? Just as raw as it gets, what would really trigger you and get Wait, you to so point? You're taking making, Kurt's question and now. You're making a new <laughs> exercise. <laughs> Making kind the of. answer a question, <laughs> kind on of, the spot. but but what would, yeah, what would trigger you? Because I think some people are sitting there going, "Oh, what would trigger these guys?" Or what triggers me? What what would it be? Right. Well, so so what's what's interesting? Man. So really, the question is, what are you uh, invested in? Yeah. Right. right. Um, and so it's because those things would would do that, and and probably what would trigger me most. I'm trying to think of my, the wording for this. Um, are are things that become obstacles to the kingdom of God moving mm. forward? Sure, that someone throws in, and it, it's clearly a distraction. Yeah, um, that's, that's right. Just and, and it might it might be 
it it might be people with with their uh, maybe someone with a an issue that's a small issue that ends up drawing a lot of people that way it might also be uh in my mind misprioritizing what the church is to be about and and what our purpose is mm. and and then we then we th- throw in uh, a lot of emphasis on something that does not move the kingdom forward mm. uh so that and you've probably seen that with me. I get more worked up. No, it's great. Yeah. It's great. No, it is. It, I, and it's it's a good righteous um, indignation. But I, think. I don't yes. I don't handle it well sometimes, yeah. and so that's what I. Well, thanks I'm for sharing that, Kurt. Yeah, yeah. Mine's a little more petty than good. that. All right. Um, well, the thing that triggers me often is if I feel um, unappreciated, mm. um, especially around areas where I feel like I've been helping someone. And then I almost get the opposite response of what I'm looking for. That usually triggers me. Yeah. Yeah. Where I feel like. Underappreciated. Wow. Yeah. Well, it almost feels like that, the bite, the hand that, that feeds you. Yeah. And usually that kind of works me up in the sense of being like, oh man, that, that made me mad. Or especially if someone attributes um, motivation that they mm. think I have, that's not accurate. Mm. And so they try to mind read for me and they go, well, you did that because you just care about yourself or um, or they don't sure. realize maybe how busy I am behind the scenes and they just see the forefront of their own issue and they go, you just don't have time for me. And I'm like, that's just not the case, you know? And so right. those, those things oftentimes trigger me in the moment. And so mm-hmm. I have to take a deep breath and be calm and respond that's in a rational way. That's good to know. I'll put that in my arsenal. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Feel Graham, free to I use want that you know. against me, however you will, to test me. And I to appreciate really Make me a, a Teflon man. <laughs> <laughs> you are very appreciated. Thanks, At least by Jimmy. me. I appreciate that. I appreciate you, Graham. I appreciate your appreciation. All right, Adam, stop I, delaying. I appreciate what? you saying that. I'm not delaying. <laughs> I'm telling him I appreciate him. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> are you triggered? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm triggered. Um, I, can, I can relate with that, too. Um, but I think something else that, as I'm sitting here thinking about it while you guys are all answering, um, sometimes I feel like I get quote unquote triggered by like my own feelings about things like my natural instinct Mm. instinctual feelings um and reactions to certain things like things that i i know i shouldn't be feeling about something but i just can't help it and that's really frustrating to me Mm. like if i'm if i'm feeling jealous about something that i shouldn't be feeling jealous about but i can't i can't just not feel jealous about it Right, that that kind of stuff. So you get angry at yourself when that happens. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, why I, am I, I jealous it. about this? Like, it's right. it's a good thing for someone. So else. you get right. triggered by your own feelings that you feel like you shouldn't have. Right. Mm. Well, I think I think that's a that's a such a good one because I really I experience that as well because you you want to celebrate that other person. Right. But you can't because you've got this jealousy thing going on. Mm. Right. Yeah. No, yeah no, what's no, wrong I, with you guys? I, I don't like that at all. <laughs> Keenan's over here perfect. Yeah. In their moment of vulnerability. What's wrong yeah. with you guys? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keenan Eaton. No, because I'm, <laughs> no, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here completely agreeing Keenan. with him. Yeah. Never talking ever again. Yeah. No. <laughs> you can come talk to me, Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Adam, Thanks. you're appreciated too. Thanks. Um the yeah, for me at least, it's it's kind of funny. It's uh what I get most triggered when with disloyalty. Um and it's just a a thing, I guess it's similar to you, Adam. It's it's I more get frustrated that I feel that way, um, because everyone has their own um, prerogatives and they're all their own independent people following the Lord, hearing from the Lord. I, I just, I'm a, uh, maybe I grew up too much on like the band of brothers kind of stuff, but, and it is this, this innate desire to have, to experience and give a loyalty that sometimes God needs to break down because he's got other purposes for us and people and maybe even, a um, contrary directions that I would consider, well, that was just disloyal, but yeah, there's nothing that probably in my own flesh boils my blood more. And this is the same thing with my, my brother's girlfriend, that if I look back, my real vice is this this deep desire to experience loyalty from other people and then be loyal to others. And, um, you know, kind of like cross me once kind of mentality. And so, but abiding in Jesus, I think, helps quell that because when we see the kingdom instead of our own, it's, at least for me, when we see the the kingdom of God's priorities instead of my own inner personalities. And it's just a little easier to, to let those things go or at least check my heart and perspective. So 
Well, then I won't tell you I'm on Team Graham then. No, you I, can because I'm on Team I Graham too. I don't want to break loyalty with you. We're on the same. If we're up, if we're all on <laughs> okay. Team Graham, then we're all on I'm the on same team. I'm on Team Jesus, so... Team. Oh, if you're, wow. if you're wow. Wow. okay. Okay. See, Whoa. see now what, Adam's what, jealous what? of that. Adam, shut this thing down. <laughs> I'm think triggered. I just spiritually <laughs> broke like, your ankles just then. Trigger the button. <laughs> <laughs> broke your ankle. Yeah. It's time to end now, huh? Okay. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. We got to take care of business. Yeah. I'm yes. going to trigger. Graham is Chris Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to trigger this outro button right now. Uh, thanks guys for listening. Button, if you don't share this with somebody, I will be very triggered. Uh, <laughs> so please do that. Um, Yes. Thanks for listening, our loyal listeners. Thanks, we'll Bob and see Sally. See you next week. <laughs>